Hello, guys. <clears throat> I want to tell you a story this morning about something that happened. Uh, I got I got stung by something down in Florida years and years ago. Now, do you remember the place I used to go to when I was a kid with my parents? Uh, not my parents, but my uh, grandfather and grandfather. Grandfather and... <laughs> excuse me. My grandfather and my father. This place, my, my grandfather and my father, they went into this business together. And what the business was, was my, my dad was a fantastic auto body mechanic. He could take a car that was basically, I mean, smashed to pieces. And inside a couple of days, he could turn it back into a car again. <laughs> and he was faster than anybody else at doing that, too. At taking a car that was completely, utterly destroyed. And I am not exaggerating to you guys. I mean, a car where where the car had been just basically in a, uh, a wreck to where there was nothing left of it, practically. It looked like it had been in a car crusher. And he could turn it back into a car again, you know. <laughs> and my grandfather, he was... He he knew my father was the best at this, too. He was about three times faster than any of the other guys at turning a wreck back into a car again. And he could even straighten an awful lot of the parts that had been... See, he'd been taught old school how to do auto body mechanics back when they used to use lead. Uh, that's when he was trained. And uh, he could take, like, a, a fender off that was all smashed to pieces... And uh, he would take it off the car, and he would actually beat it out, and he would use his dolly and his hammer, and he knew how to shrink metal, and he knew how to stretch metal, and he knew how to rework metal. And he would take that thing, a fender off, and quite literally lay it on the bench, you know. And he would take his little flat hammer uh, and a couple of other hammers. He had about four hammers and a couple dollies, and he'd have a torch there, and and uh, he'd have a he would have a wet rag, you know, and he would start hammering, bang 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 tap 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 bang 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 bang, bang. and using the heat, shh, you hear the torch going, and he'd heat in the metal in certain spots, and tap 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 tap, you know, and and about probably ten minutes, the fender that was all mangled would be the old shape the fender was originally, more or less. Then he'd grind the spots where, where it was a little bit crinkled, you know, and he'd put a layer of Bondo on it, or auto body filler, and then he'd sand it and stuff. And in about a half an hour, that fender would be just exactly like a new fender. And he'd slip it back on the car again, you know, and then he'd start on the other fender. And and he would just move around the car, and he, he was a steady worker. He worked like a machine, quite seriously, almost like a... If you watch him work, he just didn't stop. Like, he, he'd start at 8 o'clock in the morning, and, and he'd have the first fender done in the first half hour, and then the other fender would be done a half an hour later, and then, and then he'd start tapping the roof out, and then he'd work out to the wrecked quarter panel, you know, on the car, and he'd, he would just steady going like that so at the end of the day you would come back and the car would be like half done and the car was a total wreck you know so they would go down him and my grandfather go down to this place called Sadisco, where they had all these cars that were wrecked and they would bid on them at auction and they had this traveling bus there you know and the bus they would get on board and, and they had the whole side of the bus cut away so the whole side of the bus was open. And they'd put bleacher seats inside the bus. They extended almost down to the ground, like a set of bleachers. They built them in. They tore all the seats out to the inside of the bus at Sadisco. And, and they cut the whole side open of the bus. And they put bleacher seats in that come all the way down almost to the ground on one side. like, And then on the bottom of the bleacher seats, they had these uh, big tanks of uh, soda pop and... and uh, Beer and uh, hot dogs and, uh, and donuts and uh, pretzels and all kinds of stuff down there. And everybody would sit up in the bleacher seats. And you just go down the bleacher seats and grab whatever you wanted and sit there and eat it as the bus. The bus would slowly idle through. And they had loudspeakers on the bus and the auctioneer would be there. 
the base of the bus, and he'd be going, $50! $50! $60! $60! Here's $70! Oh, and he would go, you know? And then he'd say, Sold! You know, to whoever was in the audience. You know, a big, big audience there, you know? And the bus would slowly travel through the field, and it would bid on these cars. So what the guys would do is they'd come in early, two, three hours early, you know, and they would take a look at the cars on the list. They'd go down through the lot, you know, a great big lot. The lot was about maybe 100 acres, and it's just full of cars everywhere, cars, 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 you know. And they was constantly bringing new ones in. They were they would bring in like a 100 new cars a week, you know, and these cars were all smashed. Every car was smashed. And some of them were completely smashed, you know. So one of the things my dad liked to do is what he called a clip. Where you take a car smashed in the front end take and buy another one just like it was smashed in the rear end. <laughs> it's called a clip. You know, they used to call it a clip. And uh, also, uh, my dad, you know, he used to like to get ones that had been rolled. You know, had a good undercarriage. Like the, 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 that way he didn't have to mess with the wheelbase. He didn't have to pull out the... Uh, uh, if the tire, all the tires were tracking properly on the undercarriage, you know, after the car had been rolled, he would uh, he would just uh, uh, be able to knock the dents out. And I told you how quick he can get rid of dents. You know, if he takes, he, like he used impact wrenches, and he'd have that fender off in five minutes. He could have a fender off. Zing, 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 the nuts would come off, you know. My dad would be in there with the impact wrench, and, and you'd be pulling on the fender, and the next thing you know, tear, the fender tears off, you know, because it's it's nothing holding it anymore, you know. And uh, he's got that fender, and then he goes over to the bench, and then he slides the fender back on a few minutes later. It's all repaired, you know, and ready for Bondo. And he'd go around the car. Both fenders, you know, if the roof if the roof was damaged, he'd, he'd have that roof dollied out in no time, you know. And uh, he used to use that old trick of laying, uh, laying boards on the floor. And then uh, he had a, a special jack. He had everything put together for himself that he could pop a roof out and, and bring it back up to where it should be. And he's just good at this kind of stuff. He did so many cars, you know. He got really good at it and... Uh, so my grandfather, what he would do is, my grandfather would go to Sadisco, he'd scout out the cars, and he'd bid on them while my father was fixing them. And my grandfather was really good at bidding on them, and, and then he would go and get all the parts that was needed. He knew what my dad could fix and what he couldn't fix. Sometimes a fender would have a big, maybe if it had been hit by something that was tore open, the whole fender was just ripped open and there was hard, just shreds left of it, nothing left to, to dolly out. Then my grandfather would buy a new fender, you know, and stuff. But he, he'd look the car over, my grandfather knew about what my dad could handle to repair and what parts he needed to fix. Like if the grill was all smashed to pieces, there was nothing left of it, my grandfather would buy a new grill, you know. He'd only buy the parts that really needed. Like if the grill was just had a little crack in it, he'd expect my dad to fix it with some epoxy or something, you know, a, the, a few little cracks in the grill, you know, or something. He'd expect my dad to actually fix it. Uh, so he knew what was repairable and what wasn't, so he'd buy the parts. My grandfather would go all around town trying to find the cheapest parts. And he was a part allocator. He was also the, the one who bought the cars. So they had this little business going, repair these cars, and then they put them out for sale, and they had a little car lot going. So anyway, about that time, maybe after this car lot had been going for about a year, my dad wanted a truck. And so he said to me, uh, and, and uh, he said to me, come on, let's go. Uh, we'll go today, you know, and we'll go down to Sadisco, and uh, we're going out looking for a truck. So I went along with him, and I was getting to be a pretty big boy by then. I, I think I was about maybe 17 or 18 or something, you know, and and uh, I went along with my dad then, you know, and uh, we went out to Sadisco. So we were on the drive out to Sadisco, and it was a warm morning, beautiful, sunny, and uh, we are driving through the highway to Sadisco. We landed at Sadisco's, and I got out of the car, you know, and... Uh, 
Uh, you know, I was kind of feeling my oats back then. I was a pretty, pretty tough, rugged young fella, you know, and, and I was uh, going around with my dad, you know, and back lot of disco looking for this truck. So we did. We found a pickup truck, a pretty nice one, way back in the lot. And uh, he said, my dad said, go check it out, uh, because I knew a fair amount about cars and trucks too back then, you know, because I that's what I our family's business was, you know, it was, cars and trucks and stuff he said go check that one out that brown one back there uh, it's been sitting there for a while you know you can see it had it, and, and my dad was thinking hey you know i can get it cheap so my dad was kind of behind me following along and and uh, i walked up to the truck and you could tell it had been sitting on the lot for a long time so First thing I did was, is I said, uh, Pop, we got to check what's under the hood. See what's going on with this truck. So I reached in and I was trying to find the, uh, the, the pull lever to pull the, uh, the hood uh, latch up underneath the front of the hood, up underneath the grill. And uh, Pop says, what's that? There's a few bees flying around. And I said, yeah, I see the bees. So I reached my hand underneath and I was... Pulling, trying to pull the latch and had my had my hand down underneath the the grill of the truck you know and i was where's this latch pop and the pop was coming over and he's saying i don't know i tried to find it and uh, i i found it and i pulled it over and click i got it the hood and i went to reach my other hand up and i still had one of my hands down underneath the grill all of a sudden i felt something in the back of my hand right center of the back of my hand it felt like somebody had jabbed a knife right through the center of my hand. Ah! Pulled my hand up. Pop says, what's it? What's wrong? I said, something, something nailed me in the back of my hand. It really hurts. Oh, my God, it hurts. Right in the center of my hand, my, 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 uh, my left hand. Pop says, well, I don't know. He says, something must have stung you. I said, yeah, something stung me. Oh, is it ever hurting? I was having my, holding my hand down between my legs, you know. And uh, Pop says, let me see, let me see. He says, he says something, something must have stung you. Maybe it was one of those bees that were flying in the air around there. And I said, no, I don't know. It hurts a lot worse than a bee. Really bad. So I held my hand up, and there wasn't a whole lot to see. It just, there wasn't much there. It just looked pretty normal you know and pop says i don't know he says it's awful bad he says it's really hurting you i said yeah it is it's really hurting so i went over and got in the car pop says well we're gonna go i says i don't want that truck anyway it didn't it doesn't really suit me you know that old truck i says okay let's go you know so I started driving down the highway with pop so we were heading over toward eustace we left sadisco and we were driving toward eustace and it was Still a nice day. He says, your hand's still hurting you? I says, yeah, it's still hurting, but not as much as before. He says, oh, it'll probably, Pop says, oh, it'll probably be okay. I said, yeah, probably will. You know, it's not hurting as bad as it was. It's still hurting, but not as bad as it was. So we started driving along. And my hand started hurting worse again. And the back of my hand started to swell up. Pop says, I, I don't know. He says, your hand's starting to swell up a little bit. I says, yeah, I know, and it's starting to really hurt bad. So I wrapped a, a handkerchief we had in the car around my arm. And uh, I don't know why I did that, but I wrapped it around my arm, and, and I kind of tied it off a little bit, like, you know. And... Uh, uh, anyway, I, I had that on there, and it was, it was, it was, I was restricting the blood flow of that hand a little bit. I was. And, uh, my hand by that time was starting to swell up, and I was starting to feel a little bit trembly. So, we were driving along toward Eustace, and we are getting almost to Eustace. And it started to get worse. And, uh, as it got worse, you know, I, I, I tied that thing off a little bit tighter, and, and, uh, I kept feeling a little bit sicker and a little bit sicker, you know, and, and a little bit cold and weak, and and uh, 
and my hand was swelling up bigger and bigger, you know, and it was starting to hurt, really hurt, stabbing pains in it and everything else. I said to Pop, I said, this is getting bad. I'm starting to get sick. Pop was starting to get a little bit nervous himself. He's saying, listen, you know, he says, he says, uh, what what stung you underneath there? What what was that? Was it a bee? He said, you know. And I was like, I don't know. I said it felt like I said it felt like a dagger going through the back of my hand. Pop says, I don't know either. He says, you're getting sick. And I says, yeah, I am. He says, you're getting pale. And I was by that time I was starting to get into a cold sweat, all over. I felt clammy all over. I felt like weak and trembly and. And uh, the more I felt that way, the more I f kept turning that that thing I had on my ar arm and I kept tightening it up, like like the the tourniquet. I had actually I had a tourniquet on my on my arm. I'd put on myself, you know. I kept tightening it up a little bit tighter. So we went into the hospital in Eustis, and we went into the emergency department. Me and Pop. I said, he says, my boy has been stung on the wrist by, by something, and I don't know what it is. And they were very nonchalant. They were like, ah, yeah, all right, whatever. <laughs> you know, uh, the nurse come along, let me see your hand. Uh, I don't see much. She says, swollen a little bit, you know, well, whatever, you know. And uh, by that time, I was all pale and cold, sweaty, and sick all over, you know, feeling sick all over, so. Went into the hospital, you know, and they took the tourniquet off. They said, you don't need this. They took the tourniquet off. And, you know, I started to feel weak and sick and dizzy. So they come along and they took my blood pressure and they felt my pulse and everything. And they said, his blood pressure is a bit low, they said. His blood pressure's low, you know. And they said, we're going to give him a shot. And then we're going to see what happens. So they pulled down my pants, and they gave me the shot in the rump. They pulled my pants up, down a little bit, like not all the way down, but a little down a little bit. And they gave, the doctor gave me a shot in the rump. I don't know what that shot was that he gave me. But I started to feel a little bit better, you know. Back in those days, you know, you, you had to pay the hospitals. It just wasn't free, you know. You had to pay. Anyway... So he gave me the shot in the rump. Well, I started to feel a little bit better. A little bit. And my hand was, seemed to be like, it seemed to be fairly stable. It wasn't getting much worse. And so after I sat there, I sat there in the hospital for about an hour or so. And, and they said, how are you feeling? I said, I'm a little bit better. I feel a little bit better. They said, well, yeah, okay. They said, it's probably just a bad bee sting or something. They said, uh, you can go home. I said, okay. And me and Pop left the hospital. We got in the car and we drove on out home. So that was late in the afternoon, you know, quite late in the afternoon. So I got home, you know, and, and uh, I went and I was starting to, uh, uh, I think I'm a little bit hungry. I went and get a little something to eat, you know. And my mother was there at home. And, you know, after I had something to eat, I started to get cramps. These stomach cramps. And I started to get the pain back again on my hand. My hand started to swell again. Bigger than it had been before. And I started to get that sick feeling, like a cold, sweaty feeling again. So I went over and laid on the couch. My mother started to get worried about me. Well, you know, as the evening progressed, you know, into the evening, these stomach cramps came, and they were the worst stomach cramps I've ever, ever had in my life. I never had anything before like them or before or since. And they spread from my stomach to my whole abdomen. I was in these awful cramps and cold sweat that night, and it was almost like I had a fever, and it was like the... the my bite on my hand swelled up so big that I couldn't bend my fingers, and it swelled all the way up practically to my to my uh, to my elbow. My whole arm was swelled up, you know, mostly up, up all the way up to my elbow, and 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 my fingers were they looked like sausages, you know, and the back of my hand swelled up like a loaf of bread, you know, 
and and uh and i had these awful cramps and i was laying there and my mother was like what would she do she was like what what would she do take her take him to the hospital call the call the ambulance or what you know along in then when she was just getting right she was starting to panic you know because i was really bad bad off you know i mean i was sick I was shivering all over, you know, and she was putting blankets on me and I was laying on the couch. When it got to its worst, it kind of peaked around 11 o'clock that night and I started to lessen. Started to lessen and I started to get better. About 11 o'clock that night, the cramps started to subside a little bit. And I got through the worst of it, you know. And my mother settled back down because she says, well, whatever it was, she says, he's, he's starting to feel a little bit better now, you know, after 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock. She stayed with me until about 1 o'clock at night, you know, and I started to recover a little bit. And uh, I, uh, she put blankets over me and I fell asleep, you know, and uh, I was going to be okay. But uh, I'm going to tell you, the next morning I woke up and uh, the cramps weren't as bad. I had cramps for a whole week after that. They slowly subsided, you know. I had these, and they would come and go. These stomach cramps for a whole week, and I had uh, my hand was swollen, and on the back of my hand, wherever it bit me, whatever in the heck it was, it made a it made a, a like a, a a sore that was like wouldn't heal for a while. It took like two weeks for the sore to heal on the back of my hand. Now I'm going to tell you. What I think happened, I think it was a black widow underneath that hood. That's what I think. I think he was hiding down in the grill of that car. And I think I stuck my hand down this nest. That's what I think happened. I think it was a black widow bite. Like, I've done a little bit of research, and that's one of the symptoms of black widow bite, stomach cramps. And that's one of the biggest symptoms I had was stomach cramps. So anyway, that situation passed, you know. And I'll never know to this day, really, what actually stung me underneath the hood of that car. But there is some exotic things down there in Florida, you know. Uh, insects and different things. It could have been some sort of a big giant wasp or something like that. I'm not sure. But uh, whatever it did, it gave me a good rubbing. <laughs> Probably the worst uh, uh, worst bite I've ever had in my life, you know, and I'm pretty immune to bees. I've been stung by bees an awful lot of times. I get, I've been stung, but uh, this was this was something different. This was something really toxic, whatever it was. It made me really sick. So anyway, listen, thank you guys for listening. Like and subscribe, and we'll catch you guys in the next show. Bye-bye, guys.